Hey everybody, Memphis here and welcome to the first episode of Pokecast. It's a podcast about Pokemon and I'm gonna talk about random stuff based on the game or the next game who's just around the corner or some personal experience that we had with the game and having some fun. And to help me with those podcasts because just having one person talking is kind of boring, I brought my awesome friend here. Please introduce yourself. Hey guys, it's AA Galway here. You can call me Adam or just A. I don't care. <laughs> But I'm here to help and I'm glad to do this. So, before we start this game, I just need to explain how we just pick up our Pokemon. Since we have like a 721 right now, we just use a random, random number generator and pick up some numbers. And then we have this awesome Pokemon team that we have here. So, let's not prolong our talking and just go to the battle. So, let's get this thing going. Adam, let's start our Pokecast asking you a really easy and really important question. How did you start playing Pokemon? How did you start using Pokemon as one way to have fun and to enjoy your life and enjoy everything you do and enjoy just enjoy playing? How did you start playing Pokemon? I remember buying from, I think it was, uh, it wasn't GameStop, it was from like a little game store out in Santa Barbara. I bought my Pokemon Red version, and then later got Blue and then Yellow version. And I started with the first gen games, and while I didn't get very far in them, I got like up until like Snorlax, like right after you catch Snorlax. Um, I really enjoyed them. I, I Back then, because I'm not very good at video games, I thought they were very difficult. The first gen essentially was probably one of the more difficult ones in the generations in the entire series, I believe. I feel like a lot of the games have gotten easier since they made more changes to it. It became more accessible in a lot of ways, I think. Whereas Pokemon was just starting out. Like, they didn't have the uh, attack and special attack split, or the defense split. Um, defense, special defense split, like they do uh, with today's uh, Pokemon games. And I think that played out a big part in how far I got in later games. I honestly didn't have anyone to play it with, so I just played it by myself. I played it for the story, I played it for discovering new areas, and I played it for basically trying to come up with an awesome team to battle with. And that's how I, I take that sort of approach, and I apply it with how I play any Pokemon game for the first time. And I would apply it that way with everything. I would look at the story and see, oh, is the story good, or would I, say, would I go and look for... Like, what sort of interesting Pokemon can I discover that I don't know about? Like, oh, what's this Pokemon do? What type is this, you know? And kind of discover that through battling. So I was very battle-focused in my playthrough of all the Pokemon games through each generation. What about you? How do you uh, enjoy Pokemon? What sort of things do you like to do? I know you started way later than I did. Yeah, I started, like, way later, but the first contact that I ever had with Pokemon was based on the Pokemon animation. I watched that as a kid and I love it. It was funny, it was quirky, and it was just colorful and you had like awesome creatures that had awesome power-ups and you could make them fight. It was a good concept, I like it. But at the same time, uh, the first game that ever came into contact was, I think it was a remake of the first generation, like Fire Red and Leaf Green. That's the name, right? It's yeah, been a while. I don't, I don't remember that well. The, you got the names I right. Remember, yeah, I got the names right. At least that. Uh, and <laughs> I do remember playing a little, but not like using the Game Boy. I played like on an emulator, like way later when I think it, I, the first time I played a, a Game Boy or not the Game Boy. I, the first time I played a Pokemon game, we already had like the DS being a hit in the United States and everything. Uh, so I like the concept. The yeah, the DS was out. I'm pretty sure it was. Or if it wasn't, like it was uh, at the verge of being released. Uh, I was looking. Um, I had some friends that was playing and said it was a good game. I kinda wanted to play it too to see if I could like it that much. However, I wasn't that impressed. I mean, the game is good. The story and the plot is interesting, but. The main fact that I couldn't complete the Pokédex uh, bothered me. I'm kind of a completionist guy, even if I'm really bad at doing so. 
And the fact that I had to have someone to help me to complete my Pokedex kind of frustrated me. Uh, and so I left Pokemon aside for a good amount of time. I just started to play it again when I bought the Alpha Sapphire like two years, like two years after its release, or maybe one. I'm not I so sure. I would say about two or three. It's been out for a while. Yeah, I think it was like two years after its release because I had the opportunity to buy one and I had someone to play with, which was you, Adam, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I replayed uh, Omega <laughs> Ruby for you, which is interesting yeah. that I'm playing Omega Ruby again. The only generation I think I was willing to do that with because by the generation I did complete, the first one I ever bothered to sit through and beat the Elite Four all the way through was, in fact, Ruby version. That was the game I played with, and it was Gen 3. That became, like, my staple and my comparison for the other gens that came up after it. And I do agree with you that the story was interesting, but I kind of have this motto with games and stories. Nothing's perfect. There's going to be some sort of issue. Uh, I mean, with the Pokemon anime, I remember liking it a lot, but there were some continuity issues, especially in the beginning. Um, like Pikachu being able to Thunderbolt Rhyhorn's horn or Rhydon's horn and that knocking it out, even though that would never work <laughs> against a ground type. <laughs> yeah, ever. but it was like, uh, I do think that they just want to make some kind of badass Pokemon because it was like the main protagonist Pokemon and actually and it was kind of nice to see how Pikachu and a Pokemon who wasn't supposed to win against a rival horn or Onyx still been able to win and overcome um, all, the all the troubles and difficulties that it could face. I think they made that on the anime just because to show people that you can do stuff even if somebody says it isn't possible, just to give that kind of positive review or positive feeling for the people, for the kids watching it. I. I think that's why they made some ludicrous stuff like Pikachu uh, knocking out a high horn or Onyx or Brock Onyx. Uh, but besides that, uh, I, I like it. I like the story. I like uh, how the game develops. Although I don't like the way like you have to catch your uh, the legendaries before. Uh, the before you four? have to fight the four. I don't. Th I don't think it's nice. I don't think it would be. It would, I don't think it would make sense. I just don't think it's right. I mean, supposedly the legendary Pokemons are the strongest ones or the most powerful ones around. And it's just weird to see a, a legendary being level 45 or so and the Elite Four Pokemon having a 75 or 77 level Pokemon. There's just a weird. reason for that. And I'd like to actually address the, kind of everything you said. To start off, I understand your point, and I actually think that's one of the things that I really like about Pokemon. Or at least, when I think about Pokemon battling, um, I know like when you play those games solo, like I didn't have anyone else to trade with, so I never completed the Pokedexes ever, um, until I like met you. Then I started completing it more, because then I could get a Sableye, or you know, I didn't have to buy the other versions and then trade with myself on like, an other, like, a D, uh, like have two of the same system and trade with myself. Which is what I used to do to try and complete the Pokédex, or to try and get like a like a, a, a Kadabra become an Alakazam or something, which I never have been able to do on my own. Actually, I never had the patience to catch an Abra, but that's another thing. Uh, I like that the uh, Pokémon world po offered possibilities where just because you're at a disadvantage doesn't mean you can't win, and I think I like that um, in the Pokémon world myself. And as far as why the legendaries are the way they are, I think Pokemon has this sort of idea where with the help of trainers and Pokemon working together, they can outlast the potential of even the strongest Pokemon on their own. It's sort of this idea of teamwork, I believe, that comes into play. And I know it sounds weird when you think about how battles are structured that there's teamwork involved, but there's the, the idea in the anime of the Pokemon and the person cooperating, working as a team together, you know? And not... Mm -hmm. Which is kind of weird, because when we often think about Pokemon battles, we think, oh, you're just a person telling an animal what to do, you know? That's like a negative view that people get of Pokemon, but 
it's really a cooperative thing. There's several times in the anime, Charizard, um, Iris's uh, Dragonite, where they the Pokemon just won't listen. And even in the games, when you don't have the, enough badges, your Pokemon doesn't listen to you. I found that one out myself, and I remember in Ruby version, I had an Akron that. Yeah, that did not want to listen to me because I leveled it up too high, thinking, oh, I'm just going to use it to sweep everything. It decided not to listen to me, and then it died <laughs> in battle. And really? That was Whoa, yeah, that, really. That, that, it happened. It happened. Just, I just, I thought it was amazing, you know? Um, but it's sort of that idea that uh, trainers and people work together, um, that they can overcome any sort of odds. That's true, and actually you have this, uh, the friendship concept, like... Some Pokemon just involve when they do have high friendship or something, which means you need to have a kind of connection between them. You know, in the game it's just like walking and just don't let it faint in and leveling up. And that's kind of easy to, uh, to do that, but I like the way that the friendship worked on like the anime. Like, everybody is fighting to protect each other and showing affection and showing how they care about their Pokemon. Like, pretty much everyone did that. I like how Brock uh, took care of all Pokemon that he could find that need some help. And I really like how they humanize all this game. Because if you think about it, the game is good clean. Just like, find some Pokemon, train it, have some good moves, and fight against the gym leaders. That's pretty much it. If you think about it, the game just resumes in into that. But passing through the ages and passing through the gym, all the generations, you could uh, see how that it was improving. They improved like the, uh, the friendship situation and now po um, Pokemon me with making you even more personal with every single monster that you have. And I think that's a good thing about Pokemon and that's something that made me really reevaluate my, my thoughts about it and wanted me to enter into the game and start playing it. And actually I'm kind of glad I've done that because it's now one of my favorite games. For reals. <laughs> it's one of my favorites that's... too, honestly. I'm really glad I think... that I got into Pokemon all yes. years ago. And I still enjoy playing it. And I still enjoy going through the main story. And even though the stories may not be the best, I still find it fun. And I also love battling. And honestly, I looking at the, how that battle turned out just now, I'm a little surprised you did so well with that Mega Charizard. But looks, <laughs> thank God for Suicune, so... huh? <laughs> So did I. I was quite impressed about that. Yeah. Uh, well, I think that w that's enough for now, uh, talking about our experiences and how we enjoy it. And for the next time, we're probably going to talk about something else. And I'm really looking forward to that. I really had a lot of fun, even if I lost. But it was a really nice battle. <laughs> yeah, you turned, you almost turned it around there, like, perfectly. I was amazed. Like, I don't even know how... I did not know Mega Charizard X had, like... I didn't know its ability would make it that strong, honestly. Neither do I. Actually, it was the first time I was using Charizard or a Charizard, a Mega Charizard X. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I think for now it's enough. And thank you everybody for watching and listening to us. And if you have some ideas, some uh, topics, if you want to share, maybe random teams you want us to try out or theme exactly. teams. Exactly. Or here. how did you we'll do them. First, as first contact with Pokemon. Just leave in the comments below. Have a great day, and see you later. See ya.